So we're in week three of A Day at the Museum, and we're learning today that Jesus gives us a taste of God's power. I love this story, and I get to tell the Bible story a little bit later in our service. And just remember, at Grace Kids, we're all about helping kids become like Jesus by loving God and serving others. All right, tour group, please follow me this way, follow me this way. Here we are in the prehistoric museum. I am Tammy, your tour guide. Behind me, you can see the powerful dinosaurs. So, so cool. That's amazing. Let me, hang on, hang on. Yes, here we have a T-Rex. That's amazing. We have a Stegosaurus. What? Uh -huh. And we have a Velociraptor. No way. And down this corridor, we also have a Pterodactyl. No, so cool. I'm blown away, guys. I'm blown we away. Gotta go I'm All blown of away. these dinosaurs are very powerful. Wow, I wait. Can't even, I can't even imagine. That is crazy. <laughs> um, Kate, Caitlin, what? What are you doing? I, I want to be a dinosaur. She was talking about how the T-Rexes and all these dinosaurs have so much power, and I want to have that same power too, guys. Um, so I'm being a dinosaur. Uh, but but you're not a dinosaur. You're, you're Caitlin. You're not a dinosaur. But but all I'm, of these dinosaurs I, I are extinct. A dinosaur. I want to be a dinosaur. You, no, we need you to be Caitlin, okay? But hey, it's okay, because if you know Jesus, he gives us a taste of God's power. And he True. is like all powerful, like even more than these dinosaurs. Well, I Wait, wish I um, knew that before I started um, becoming a dinosaur. Excuse me, did did you say did you say taste? I, we did yeah. say taste. You, you're not tasting anything in this museum, are you? Uh, no. I wasn't explaining it. No, please, no. please do not taste anything. These bones are very old. This museum is very old. Do not taste anything in this museum Probably to get power or anything. All right. Okay. Okay. We're good. Nothing from us. Are okay. you sure? No tasting. Yes. No tasting. Ooh, okay. We're good. Phew. All right. We have another museum to go to, so please follow me this way, this way, this way. Follow, follow, follow. We are in our third week of the Bad Reverse, which means you should have it memorized. Memorized. Okay, it's almost there. It's almost yeah. there. Yeah. I feel pretty good. Okay, so this next part, What's the I challenge? am challenging you okay. to say the memory Erase. verse. No, but you. I think you'd win if we did a race. We're not gonna do a race. Oh. So what we're gonna do instead is, if you notice on the screen, <sighs> all the words are taken away. By all the like, words oh, are gone. Bars, except yeah. for Jeremiah 29, 13. Yeah, yeah, so what we're going to do is, you're going to say the first four words. We're gonna see if you're right, and then if you're right, we'll move on. And we'll keep four on doing words. that until the end of the, the game. Ooh, I remember that uh, God was talking to the people. Uh-huh, So Correct. it's you, like you, us. you will, uh, uh, looking with binoculars, yeah. you, you will seek win. me. Yes, yes. You, you will, will seek me. me. Good job. Yes. Okay, the next one is Do also. Do I win a bright red car? No, but I could give like you. Like a game show. Like a tiny little violin. Do you want it? No. You want your violin. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. You will seek me. Uh-huh. And find me being God again. Uh-huh. A win. Win. Okay, good job, good job. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You, you're, you're getting there. A thousand dollars. I could give you two tiny violets. <sighs> Your prizes stink. Okay. And find me when. Three words. I'm the, I'm the next part. Okay. Uh, when you seek me. Good seek job. Me. Oh, you're doing so good. I'm okay. Coming. Are there like ten more words? How yeah. Words? There's about four-ish. Four, four? Okay. more words. Four more words. Mm -hmm. Seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. All your heart. All your, all your heart. Good job. Do you remember where it's found? Jeremiah 29, 13. Good job. You right didn't there. even. No, you had your eyes closed. I saw it. Oh. You, you remembered it, didn't you? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, should we say it one more time just for our friends? Yes, let's say it together. Okay, ready, set, go. You, you will seek, seek me and find me when you seek me with all, all your heart. heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Got it. So I am so happy I get to teach today's lesson. This is one of my favorite stories in all God's Word because Jesus gives us a taste of God's power. So if you have your Bibles with you, no matter if you're in your car, you're at home, flip with me or go electronically to John chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Now, kids, have you ever been to a wedding? 
and you're going, a wedding, yes, I've been to a wedding because when you're a kid and you go to a wedding, it's kind of like, oh no, gross, because you know at the end of the wedding, they're going to kiss. The man and the wife, they're going to kiss on the lips. And you're probably like, no, I don't want to see it. But that's what happens. Now, as a pastor, I've done a lot of weddings over the years. And my favorite movie of all time is The Princess Bride. And if you've seen the movie, you're gonna know there's a scene towards the end of the wedding, or end of the movie, where there's a wedding scene where Prince Humperdinck is going to marry Princess Buttercup. She doesn't wanna marry him, but they have to do this arranged marriage that he has happen for her. And when they get down into the chapel and the minister looks at him, he says, marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. And it's a hilarious scene. And I've actually done that, that little scene there in multiple weddings over the years. And every time I start a wedding off with that little phrase, there's lots and lots of laughter. For me, a wedding is it's exciting. It's joyous because this man and this woman, they have found each other, they have found true love, and they are making a pledge for a bond of marriage for the rest of their life. Now, if you were going to a wedding back in Bible days, back in Jesus' time a couple thousand years ago, it wasn't just a couple hours maybe three hours these days. You might go to a wedding because after the wedding, that's when the fun begins. There's food and there's, and there's drink and there can people doing fun games and all those kind of things. But back in those days, the weddings could last for seven days, seven days. So when you went to a wedding, it was like going on a vacation because you were going there and it was going to be a celebration, all your friends, all your family. And so Jesus was at a wedding, was with his disciples. His mom was there and part of the way through the wedding, they ran out of wine. Now wine's a big deal because back in those days they had to drink wine all the time because they couldn't always find a way to purify their water. So they needed wine. And so when they ran out of wine, all of a sudden there was this look of shock. They might've been doing the Kevin McAllister, you know, oh no. And so they were, we're out of wine, what are we gonna do? And so Mary, who is this, Jesus's mom, goes up to him and she says to Jesus, they have no more wine. Now what's interesting is if you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, at this point, Jesus had not done any miracles. But Mary knew there was something different about her son. She knew her son was truly the son of God. So she goes up to him and she says, they have no more wine. And Jesus was like, well, what do you want me to do? And then Jesus then tells his friends, his disciples to do something. And what does he tell them to do? He tells them, he says, take the jars, fill them, with water. And so they got all these empty jars and they started filling them with water because they didn't just listen to Jesus, they actually acted upon it. They took their faith and they put it into action. So they filled all these empty jars with water. Now remember, they weren't drinking water because water could, was not purified, it could make them very sick. And so they filled all these jars with water, not exactly sure what was gonna happen, but they took that and then next thing you know, when they started pouring the water out of the jar, the water had turned they now had something to drink. And it wasn't just good wine, it was great wine. And the people who were throwing the wedding, they were like, this is the best tasting wine we've had at the entire wedding. And so what we see in this story is this, that Jesus gives us a taste of who God is. Because so many times we see the miracles that Jesus did in the scriptures, and he could have healed somebody, or brought somebody back to life, or he could have stilled a storm or he could have somebody walk on water. He did so many miracles, but this miracle was a miracle because he cared about his friends. He cared about the people at the wedding, and he said, I am going to help this situation. Jesus gives us a taste of who God is. Can you guys imagine that Jesus' first miracle was something so powerful, something so crazy. He took a glass of water and he changed it into something else. Isn't that incredible? To think about that Jesus was powerful enough to do that, that later on, that same power he used to turn the water into wine, he used to heal people, raise them from the dead, heal their blind uh, eyesight so they could see again. Isn't that incredible to think about? That Jesus had so much power that he was able to take a normal glass of water like this and change it into something completely different. I just
just think it's so amazing how God can do that, how Jesus did that. The thing is, is Jesus has the same power there as he does today. The same power that he gives the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit can use with us and all that we do because the thing is, is that Jesus is God and God is powerful. He created the whole world. So my friends, as you're going throughout this week, I want you to remember that Jesus shows God's power and God is the most powerful. I have a word for you. You ready for it? It's a big word. So you gotta, I'll split up into two sections so you can say it with me. The word, first word is omni, say omni. Potent, omnipotent. That means all powerful because God is all powerful. In any problems that we're facing, God has the power to help us through them. One, two, three. Uh, hold on, what what are you doing with the plant? Um, I'm being really powerful. See, I'm exercising because I'm really powerful and strong. Um, where did you get that from? I know the. The big idea does say Jesus gives us a taste of God's power, but I don't oh, know. Taste, you're right. I'm not doing it right. I need, I need to taste the plants. Oh, but please no, please no. There's like bugs, dirt. Okay. You'll get sick. Right. I would not recommend that. Okay, I won't do that at all. No. Yes, um, but I think we should pray about that actual big idea. Oh, you're right. How Jesus gives us a taste of God's, God's power. power. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Good idea. I'm glad you did not taste that plant. All right, all right, kids, let's pray. Um, Lord, thank you so much for giving. <laughs> I forgot the big idea. We can we can just cut it. Jesus gives us a taste of that. Okay. All right, kids, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us a taste of God's power, Lord. Thank you so much for just um for coming down, Jesus, and um, just being an example and showing us um, God's power. And I just pray that um, as we continue throughout our week, that we will um, be encouraged that you have. Um, God's power. And I just pray that we'll use it um, to help others and to serve others. I thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. See ya.